Welcome in. News Radio Wood 1300 and 106.9 FM. It's Justin Barkley gearing up for our Day of Hope. Celebration tomorrow. Degage Ministries will be live there doing the show. In studio with us right now, Gonzo and Amy, and they brought... I was young and knew everything. This guy, Brian Vanderark, for Pipe. Thanks for being here with us today, guys. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You got a big show, Brian, this weekend coming up in town? Huge. 20 in a row. Yeah, we have. Uh... Do the show about once a year, and looking forward to that, getting on that stage. Have you played there yet at Twenty Monroe? Yeah, we played there last year. How do you like that place? I love it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I love it from an artist standpoint. I mean, they take great care of you. The sound is impeccable. Yeah. Uh, the stage is amazing, and I love it as an audience goer too. I've seen the Pixies there. I saw mm. a handful of. Oh, I saw um, Flaming Lips there. Wow, I loved it. I love the place. It really has, and they just celebrated their first. Mm-hmm. birthday there right the yep. it's it's really been uh i mean we've got a lot of great places to go and see things here but it really has been a great addition to the community hasn't it absolutely. i mean with with the amount of talent and groups that they're bringing in it's just it's incredible absolutely and i think uh i think the city was ready for that too for sure mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um we had always played at the intersection uh and then making the move we were a little nervous about 20 monroe because yeah. it's, you know it's twice as big but no, last year we sold a couple thousand tickets, and we're pretty close to that now already. So Somehow it just works. It works. It? People yeah. people love the place. It's it's amazing. Yeah, great place. There, there's really uh, I got to tell you, there's no better place when you want to check out a show, and uh, this one this uh, this weekend. Um, and you guys are playing on Saturday, right? Saturday night. Saturday night, if you want to go. Sponge. I love that. Yeah. And, so and uh, it's like this. This ticket is a ridiculous price. So what? What do it's you like want? Ten dollar floor tickets. Right really? Are, yeah, are in sale. So two bands. Dude, we were just talking. And I don't want to give it all away, but we were just talking off the air about how much uh, and how many things have changed and how much they've changed in music and just the fact that uh, streaming uh, has been such a big part of the way we listen and consume things now, sure. but. Uh, the artists don't see a lot of money coming back from the streams. You were just no. talking about that. In fact, in protest, I wasn't going to stream anymore. <laughs> but then yeah. that was about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And then yeah. I realized that I have a two-year-old, and yeah. I don't want clutter. Yeah. So I don't like yeah. CDs around and that kind of thing. And then I think, <laughs> well, if I do this and I go to see shows, which yeah. I encourage people to do, go to live shows more, which we do. And if you buy T-shirts off the website and that kind of thing, it helps the artist much more. But, no, I was telling uh, telling these guys, you know, we had four and a half million streams of the freshmen, and for that, we got $200. Incredible. It's, it's impossible to make a living off streaming. Music is essentially free now. Yeah. And I have to, I go around the country, and I talk to young bands, and I go into, I do some corporate speaking as well, and I tell them, you know, this is, look, music is free. These are little advertisements for you. You're paying for your own advertising. Mm. You're doing that. Forget it. You can't make a living off it. So find other income streams. It's crazy. But, you know, the good news is, is that you are doing that. It, like sure. there, the the sky's the limit. The world is open to new ways to do this. And you can pretty much write your own ticket. And we've seen a lot of artists, a lot of people, uh, even performers that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe somebody that got famous or popular from YouTube. God only knows. Right. But yeah. they're creating these new pathways. The doors are opening for people that never would have been. Open. You have to run your own business is what I've learned in the yeah. last probably four or five years. We decided, look, we're going to yeah. take, you know, we're not going to go with another label. No way. We're going to run our own business. We're mm-hmm. going to treat it like a business. We're going to go out on the road. We're going to put our own money into it and hopefully get our own money back. And so far, it's been hugely successful wow. doing it that way and keeping in control of everything. Did you come out, was it two albums this last year or earlier this year? Yeah. Well, within a two-year period, mm-hmm. yeah, we put out two rock records. Okay. So yeah. what the, one is... Um, was I reading? Was this one? One is pretty, and I haven't heard these yet. But it's live and acoustic, right? Yeah. Oh, actually, it's been three albums in the last two years. Okay. Yeah, the live and acoustic album was in a uh, was in celebration of our twentieth anniversary of our album Villains, which was the three million selling album. Mm-hmm. And so we recorded an acoustic live performance at the Ark in Ann Arbor, sold out performance, and it ended up great. And then we toured for the last year on that record. So we've gone all over the country playing acoustic villains wow. shows uh we just got back from a four-day run in florida all the shows sold out i mean it's wow. it's terrific the interest in uh 
I guess the nostalgic interest as mm-hmm. well, you know, from the mm-hmm. '90s music for people to come out and, and see yeah, it, so. yeah, especially right now. I mean, we're ready for that, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you look look at the state of the music industry and look where look where music <laughs> itself is, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. where popular music is, and I think people are hungry for those for those bands that play their instruments well and wrote good songs, songs that meant something lyrically, mm-hmm. uh, and perform well and, and put on a great live show that's yeah. I think that's why we've had this great resurgence you know justin i was talking to brian yesterday and what i respect about him as an artist and as a songwriter is that these songs that he's written more than 20 years ago have stood the test of time mm-hmm. that's a great yeah. mark for a songwriter fortunate what goes into that process you know well like i was telling john yesterday you can't be too spe- spe- uh, excuse me specific about things when you're writing lyrics you know mm-hmm. if you're writing what did i say yesterday oh if, uh, you know, something about a payphone or whatever or whatever yeah. <laughs> it's like these are specific things kind of you know, dates you kids, yeah they date yeah. you and kids can't relate to that kind of thing but if you keep things a little ambiguous a little bit poetic um, where they can take their uh, take the song and get their own interpretation from what the song is, and then it means something more to them. Yeah, and then it'll resonate longer. Uh, for instance, I fell upon the whole freshman idea, and you know, and and didn't think back then. Well, for the rest of my life, somebody's going to be a freshman, a new freshman every year, yeah. every single year. There's new freshmen, and uh, and it's it's certainly you know paid off. Uh, and that wasn't even the intent. That wasn't. I, I fell ass backwards into that mm. marketing genius. <laughs> yeah, so you talk about the business side of this, and you yeah. can try and go out and like I'm going to try and game the system and make money this way, yeah. and write this song that's going to make a lot of money. Uh, but works. when you put your heart into it, it kind of just works out sometimes. Yeah, I mean, what doesn't work is it if it's you know if it's contrived. If mm-hmm. you're doing something specifically to make money. Yeah. For me, at least, it's never worked. Yeah. You know, you can take um, the most popular song in the world and you can take the same drum beat and the same, you know, lyrical, uh, you know, uh, theme mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, the same gimmicks on there and try to make it a hit that the original was and it doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, it really, there's no time. Somehow you lose what. the magic somewhere. You definitely uh, lose the magic. I would love to yeah. talk to you sometime about Rockstar and writing for movie soundtracks because yeah. that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. That's a whole different thing, too. And that's much more lucrative, by the way. Definitely more <laughs> Revenue stream. Yeah. Revenue stream. <laughs> a whole new way to do it. Brian Vanderark again. Uh, go support one of those this weekend at uh, 20 Monroe Live. And we'll give you a chance coming up in a second uh, to hear more about that. Got to take a quick break. Back Gonzo, Amy, and Brian Vanderark from the Verb Pipe in studio right now on World Radio. 